This is your host, Danny, and this is Word Power from English Plus Podcast. I would like to welcome you to this episode, and I would like to thank you for your patience, especially my patrons on Patreon. Last week, I had a couple of issues, but now the issues are gone, and now we're back on track. We're back on track with English Plus Podcast. We have the same good stuff that I usually add, and I have a couple of surprises for you coming up this week. I'm not going to tell you about them because they are surprises. And today's episode is Word Power. They were going to talk about the headless horseman of Sleepy Hollow. But before we do that, let me remind you that you can find a lot of extra materials on the website EnglishPlusPodcast.com. You will find interactive activities and you will find a PDF downloadable worksheet where you can practice everything you have learned. So you can practice the 20 words, 10 that we're going to learn today and 10 words that we already learned in Word Power last time when we talked about inventors and inventions. And let me remind you folks one more time that you can support English Plus Podcast. You can support me to continue producing English Plus Podcast if you become a patron on Patreon. The link is in the description. Go ahead and become a patron of English Plus Podcast. You will help me create more content. And with your help, there is a guarantee that this podcast will never stop. And now, without further ado, let's start talking about the Headless Horseman of Sleepy Hollow. In the peaceful valley of Sleepy Hollow lived a tall, thin schoolteacher named Ichabod Crane. His skinny arms protruded from tattered sleeves, and his tiny head was bedecked with two huge ears and a large narrow nose. Some said Ichabod Crane actually looked like a crane, yet Ichabod was a good teacher. He rarely whipped the children, and sometimes he even walked them home. This is how he met the lovely Katrina Van Tassel, the daughter of a farmer. She was not only pretty, she was rich. Ichabod was soon enchanted by her charms. Day and night, Ichabod's mind invariably drifted to Katrina's beauty and her father's rich farm. However, there was another man in the village who was also in love with Katrina. His name was Brom Van Brunt, but everyone called him Brom Bones. Unlike Ichabod, Brom was strong and muscular. The villagers often marveled over his brawny physique. Ichabod feared Brom Bones, so to disguise his amorous purposes, Ichabod pretended to give Katrina singing lessons. Brom was not fooled, but whenever he challenged Ichabod to a fight, Ichabod refused. Brom therefore began playing tricks on Ichabod. He stopped up Ichabod's chimney and ransacked his house, upsetting his furniture and leaving a mess. Then one day, Ichabod got an invitation to a party at Katrina's house. Brom Bones was also invited. Ichabod was an accomplished dancer and danced every dance with Katrina while Brom Bones stared at him with rage in his eyes. When the dancing ended, the men began telling ghost stories about a headless ghost who rode about the valley. Ichabod believed the stories. So, as he nervously rode home that dark, lonely night, he jumped at the slightest sound and hid from every shadow. In the darkest part of the woods, he heard the sound of a horse and rider behind him. Shaking wildly, Ichabod finally peeked over his high collar what he saw sent a shiver through his body. It was a headless horseman carrying his head under his arm. Ichabod spurred his horse into a gallop, but it was too late. The headless rider lifted his head and threw it at Ichabod. The next morning, the schoolteacher was not at school. He had disappeared. In the woods, the townspeople found only Ichabod's hat and a broken pumpkin. Not long after this, Brom Bones married Katrina when asked about the pumpkin and what happened in the woods that night, Brom Bones would just laugh. Now, that was only a short account of the story. Of course, if you would like to read the whole story, it's much more interesting than my short account. But remember, we are here to focus on some words that we're going to learn from context. And I'm going to tell you about these words. We're going to learn protrude, bedeck, enchanted, invariably, brawny, physique, disguise, amorous, ransack and accomplished. 
And that's coming next. So let's start with our very first word, protrude. P-R-O-T-R-U-D-E. Protrude. What does that mean? First, to understand that, let's see how we used it in context. In the story, we said his skinny arms protruded from tattered sleeves and his tiny head was bedecked with two huge ears and a large, narrow nose. What does that mean? When we talk about the arms protruding from the sleeves, what does that mean? That means to stick out. If something protrudes from somewhere, it sticks out. And in the same example, we have a second word that is bedeck, B-E-D-E-C-K. When we said his tiny head was bedecked with two huge ears and a large narrow nose. What does bedeck mean? Now, if flags or other ornaments bedeck a place, a lot of them have been hung up to decorate it. So when we talk about bedeck, we're talking about decorating, gracing, trimming, something like that. So here, of course, it is used in a literary sense, but that is the meaning of bedeck, to decorate. Now, we usually use it for flags, yes, but we can use it as well in a literary way to talk about this man. His skinny arms protruded from tattered sleeves and his tiny head was bedecked with two huge ears and a large, narrow nose. And now for our next word, enchanted. E-N-C-H-A-N-T-E-D. Let's take a look at how we use that in context. We said Ichabod was soon enchanted by her charms. We're talking about the beautiful Katrina, of course. Day and night, Ichabod's mind invariably drifted to Katrina's beauty and her father's rich farm. So here, Ichabod, poor Ichabod, was enchanted by Katrina's charms. What does that mean? When you are enchanted, if you are enchanted by someone or something, they cause you to have feelings of great delight or pleasure or love, of course. But maybe it's not love yet. When you're enchanted by somebody, you feel great delight or pleasure. You really like this person if you're enchanted by this person. And you can't think of anybody else. So it is not love yet, but it is a highway that will get you there. So enchanted, like fascinated, charmed, entranced, absorbed by this person. That was the case with Ichabod. He was enchanted by beautiful Katrina. And in the same example, we have another word that I would like you to know about. And that is invariably, I-N-V-A-R-I-A-B-L-Y. When we said day and night, Ichabod's mind invariably drifted to Katrina's beauty and her father's rich farm. So what do we mean by invariably? If something invariably happens or is invariably true, it always happens or is always true. So it simply we're saying always, always, regularly, constantly, every time. So, Ichabod's mind invariably drifted to Katrina's beauty. That means every time, all the time. That is the meaning of invariable. And our next word is brawny. B-R-A-W-N-Y. Now let's take a look at how we use that word in context. We said, unlike Ichabod, who was skinny, brawn was strong and muscular. The villagers often marveled over his brawny physique. Now, here we have two words, actually, brawny and physique. Let's start with brawny. Someone who is brawny is strong and has big muscles. Remember, brawny is B-R-A-W-N-Y. So, someone who is brawny is strong and has big muscles. And what about physique, then? Brawny physique. When we talk about the physique of somebody, and here it's important to know the spelling of this word, it's P-H-Y-S-I-Q-U-E, physique, and that's how we pronounce it, physique. So, brawny physique. When we talk about someone's physique, we're talking about the shape and size of their body. So, it's simply the build, the body. But I would have to say, we can use body instead, but physique is a little bit more sophisticated word to use for this purpose. And remember, all the words I'm sharing with you are not just literary words, words nobody uses. No, all of these are used words. They're still used today, and they're very common words. 
Yes, I'm a big fan of literature, but I'm not teaching you words that can only be used in literary contexts. No, these words can be used in everyday contexts, and actually, they will enrich your vocabulary and language, and will make your speaking and writing more sophisticated. So, these two words, brawny and physique. Brawny means strong, muscular. Physique, we're talking about the build or the body. Now for our next word, disguise. D-I-S-G-U-I-S-E. Disguise. Now let's take a look at how we use that word in context. We said, Ichabod feared Brom Bones. So, to disguise his amorous purposes, Ichabod pretended to give Katrina singing lessons. So, here we actually have two words. Again, we have disguise and amorous. Let's start with disguise. And as you notice here, we're using disguise as a verb. Here we said to disguise his amorous purposes, to disguise something. When you disguise somebody, you try to pretend you're somebody else. You wear a costume or you put some artificial facial hair or something like that. You don't want people to recognize you. You are in disguise. That is when we talk about disguise for people. But what about here? We're talking about disguise purpose. Disguise a purpose. Disguise something. To disguise something means to hide it or make it appear different so that people will not know about it or will not recognize it. So it's kind of the same idea, but you can disguise your purposes. It might be a little bit like cheating or lying. It can be, actually. But here, Ichabod did it because he feared Brombones. He liked Katharina. He wanted to be with her. He wanted to be near her all the time. He invariably thought about her all the time, always. But because he feared Brom Bones, the muscular, the man with brawny physique, and poor Ichabod was skinny and weak. So because he feared brawny bones, he disguised his amorous purposes. And now we'll talk about amorous. Don't worry about that. But he disguised his purposes by pretending to give Katerina singing lessons. So again, to disguise something means to hide it or make it appear different so that people will not know about it or will not recognize it, like a hide or cover, something like that. And in the same sentence, we have this word to disguise his amorous purposes. And amorous is spelled A-M-O-R-O-U-S. What do we mean by that? Now, if you describe someone's feelings or actions as amorous, you mean that they involve sexual desire. Now, it can be just loving or in love or passion, but usually it involves some sexual desire. So Ichabod had that kind of purpose for Katarina. He was crazy about her. And of course, again, he was afraid of Brom Bones, so he disguised his amorous purposes by pretending to give Katarina singing lessons. And now for our very last two words of today's episode, we have ransack and accomplished. We'll start with ransack, R-A-N-S-A-C-K, ransack. So let's take a look at how we use that in context. We said Brahm, therefore, began playing tricks on Ichabod. He stopped up Ichabod's chimney and ransacked his house, upsetting his furniture and leaving a mess. So here, Brahm knew about this. Brahm was not a fool. Yes, he was the man with brawny physique, but he was not without a brain. He knew what Ichabod was after, so he started playing tricks. He stopped his chimney and he ransacked his house. What does that mean? If people ransack a building, they damage things in it or make it very untidy, often because they are looking for something in a quick and careless way. That is the meaning of ransack. And now for the final word for today's episode, and that is accomplished. A-C-C-O-M-P-L-I-S-H-E-D. Accomplished. Now let's take a look at how we use that in context. We said Ichabod was an accomplished dancer and danced every dance with Katrina while Brom Bones stared at him with rage in his eyes. Brom Bones was not a good dancer. Yes, he was the man with brawny physique, but he was not the kind of dancer Ichabod was. Ichabod was an accomplished dancer. What does that mean? When you say a person is accomplished at something, that means they're very good at it, like experts, professionals, very skilled or able. So Ichabod was an accomplished dancer, very good at it. And Brahm was not like that, so he didn't like it and he stared at him with rage in his eyes. So that was our last word. Remember, we talked about 10 words in today's episode. We talked about protrude, bedeck, enchanted, invariably brawny, physique, disguise, 
amorous, ransacked, and accomplished. Again, let me remind you, if you want to keep these 10 words in your active vocabulary bank, that means you can use them later. And that should be the purpose, right? You're listening to this episode, and I do appreciate it if you are just listening to enjoy. But if you would like to take it a step further, if you would like to keep these words we just learned in your active vocabulary bank, you can do that by using all the exercises I created to go along with this episode. I created a custom post for this episode. You can find the link in the description of the episode. And if you take the link and go to the website, englishpluspodcast.com, you will find everything you need to practice. You have interactive activities. You have the text if you would like to read it again and check the words on your own. And of course, I'm including the meaning of the words, the definition of the words we just talked about. But In addition to all that, we have interactive activities and a PDF downloadable worksheet. I included some fun activities in the PDF downloadable worksheet, crossword puzzle, word search, and something for the spelling. So based on the way you like to learn, you can find everything you need in this post. Please take the link, go there, and make these words part of your active vocabulary bank. And don't forget to support me and support English Plus by taking the other link in the description that will take you to my Patreon page. Support me so that I can continue creating the content you love. With that being said, thank you very much for listening to another episode from English Plus Podcast, another word power episode. As I told you, a couple of surprises are coming your way and I'm not going to tell you about them. So stay tuned and you will find out about these surprises by the end of this week. This is your host, Danny. I would like to thank you very much again and I will see you next time.